As we begin to move the Brent Spence Bridge replacement and rehabilitation project forward and look for delivery options and ways to fund the project, I think it's important to look at the history of this project, where we started, how we've gotten to the, the stage that we are today, and really get a full understanding of what has transpired to date to get us to this, this, this stage. We can look back all the way to 2000 when a major investment study began by OKI, Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana Regional Council on Governments. They commissioned a study, the major investment study, to look at the I-75 corridor from northern Kentucky all the way to Piqua, Ohio. It was called the North-South Transportation Initiative. From that study, which started in 2000 and ended in 2004, several projects were recommended for improvements to the I-75 and I-71 corridors from northern Kentucky all the way into um, middle of, of Ohio. With that study recommendations and motorists that drive this corridor on a daily basis, the concerns that we were starting to see with congestion and safety of the I-75-71 corridor through this, this area in the Brent Spence Bridge, we knew there was a need for a project. So in 2003, an engineering feasibility study began just to look at what could be possibly done to improve the I-75-71 corridor and, and enhance the Brent Spence Bridge. One of the concerns that came out early in this engineering feasibility study was, is the bridge structurally safe? Does it have structural deficiencies that would require a replacement of, of, this, of the structure? Through the two-year study, the engineering feasibility study, we determined that the, the, in fact the bridge, the Brent Spence Bridge, is structurally sound but functionally obsolete. Functional obsolescence or functionally obsolete means that there are safety aspects or concerns that don't allow the roadway to function as it should in today's design standards. So with that being said, we know that the corridor is functionally obsolete. It doesn't meet today's design standards from roadway design, roadway characteristics, but in fact, the bridge itself is structurally sound. The study, again, the engineering feasibility study started in 2003, ended in 2005, did determine that we could actually improve the corridor where it sits today, and that is where traffic wants to be. All the traffic that's using the I-75-71 corridor has destinations through this corridor, so the improvements need to be, be in this area. So it was determined it is practical and feasible to improve the corridor. We needed to then move forward and implement what final improvements would, would take place. So in 2005, the preliminary engineering and environmental phase of the project, which we call phase one design, began. When I say we, it's the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet and Ohio Department of Transportation. We have been working since 2003 as a bi-state management team, a bi-state project where we've been working very closely together to come up with a solution to the concerns that we have in the corridor. I think it's important to note Again, we, we know there's safety concerns and we know all the problems that, that, that we see in the roadway, but what drove us to, to the project? And that's really the purpose and need statement that, that we established early on in the engineering feasibility study and it carried through into the preliminary engineering and environmental phase of the project. And the four key purpose and need aspects are it, first, to improve safety, second, to, to decrease or remove congestion, eliminate congestion that we, that we have in the corridor. The third goal or purpose and need is to, to, um, to keep the connections to the region and the area that we have today in place because we know this is an economic, a vital corridor for, for, for the region. And finally, is, it was to correct geometric deficiencies. I've mentioned this already that we had design aspects of I-7175 corridor that don't meet today's design standards. They met designs from the 1950s and 60s and 70s, but they just don't meet to today's design standards. So those four key purpose and need criteria was what has driven us to move the project forward. In 2005, 
we started looking at, at different scenarios and worked off of what we had established in the 2003 to 2005 study. We began evaluating 25 different alternatives for different alignments and different configurations through, through this corridor. Now, I do want to make it very clear that we keep referencing this as the Brent Spence Bridge Replacement Project, and it is a bridge project. That is what the emphasis started with, with the evaluation, and, and it grew from there. What we actually have is a I-7175 rehabilitation corridor improvement project. We are looking at the bridge crossing the river crossing at the Ohio River and improvement of 7.8 miles of roadway of I-71 and 75 interstate from south of the Dixie Highway interchange in Kentucky all the way north to the northern limits of the western hills of Viaduct interchange in, o in Ohio. So we started with 25 different alternative scenarios. We kept whittling those down to come up with what we thought was the best solution for, for the project. A couple other statistics that I want to, to, to mention about, about the project. I did say it's 7.8 miles uh, of length. All the safety concerns, the, the functionally obsolete bridge and, and roadway. There are, in today's count, approximately 172,000 vehicles that use this corridor every day. The majority of that traffic, uses it during the a.m. peak rush hour times and the p.m. peak rush hour times. So it's a large, large amount of traffic that's using the corridor and anyone that drives it understands that the congestion that they experience day in and day out is, is, is a challenge to say the least. $417 billion of freight cross this bridge this corridor every year. That's more than a billion dollars of freight per day that travel through this corridor. It's about three to four percent of the gross domestic, gross national product travels right through through the heart of our region. So it's a it's a regional and national need to improve this corridor, improve safety, decrease congestion. As I mentioned, we started with 25 alternatives. By 2009, we had whittled that down to six alternatives, six alternatives for roadway configurations, and ultimately in 2012, we selected the preferred alternative, which is Alternative I. It's on the Brent Spence Bridge Project website, which is brentspencebridgecorridor.com. Uh, folks can visit the website and see the exact configurations that we have selected for the roadway alignment all the access points to I-71 and 75 through the corridor. And you can look and view at the different bridge types, the bridge alternatives that we have selected for further evaluation. We have narrowed it down to alternative I as the selected corridor, but we have not chosen the specific bridge type to date. We started with six different bridge types, and then we've narrowed that down to two, two alternatives, one being a a tied arch, very similar looking to the Daniel Carter Beard I-471 bridge upriver, or the other alternative bridge type that we're still evaluating is the cable stayed. It would be a two tower cable stayed uh, structure design. Uh, a structure type that is not currently, uh, it does, doesn't currently exist in the Northern Kentucky area. The tied arch, as I mentioned, is the same type of bridge structure that we have upriver for the I-471 corridor. So with, with where we've come from, one would say, wait a second, we've been looking at, at a project since 2000, the need since 2000, and we understand that, and, and we know that we need to continue to move this project forward. All the concerns that existed in, in 2000 and, and subsequent years have progressively gotten worse as, as the years have gone by. The challenges that we as, as a Department of Transportation, Transportation Cabinet, uh, have to work a project of this magnitude forward have been, have been extremely monumental. It is a, it's considered a major or mega project. 
uh, from the federal government, uh, federal highways, interpretation, anything, any project that's of $500 million or greater in cost is classified as a, as a major project or a mega project. Um, our current cost estimates for this bridge, this corridor improvement, range anywhere from $2.4 to $2.7 billion. So we all have understood the need for the project. I think the region and the community has gotten behind moving this project forward so, so we can have an improved corridor, improved interstate system for commuters of the area and for, for travelers that are going all the way from Florida to Michigan and any destination in between. We understand the importance of the project. What has become the challenge now is how to deliver the project and how to fund the project. Uh, 2.4 to 2.7 billion dollars is, is an enormous amount of money and more funding than either the Ohio Department of Transportation or the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet can fund with traditional methods to, to move this project into the construction phase. Currently, neither state has funding programmed to, to deliver this project. We have recently implemented what, what has been called an options analysis, or the term has been used also value for money study, where we're looking at alternative financing and alternative delivery mechanisms to move this project from the design stage to ultimate reality. This, the options analysis began late last year, 2012. We have narrowed down possible delivery options to two different delivery mechanisms, and we are currently evaluating what type of financing can be brought to the project to, to, to see the project built. Financing, the alternative financing that we are looking at, and it's been stated many times before, would be toll revenue as the funding stream to repay the debt that both states have to borrow to see this project built. So that's the challenge where we are today. We, we've talked about where we started. Um, many, many different scenarios have been evaluated from an engineering perspective. We know what we need to build now. The next step is how are we going to, to see that built? How are we going to see this accomplished? And that's what over the next several months, um, discussion and, and review and evaluation of the financing plan for the project is, is, will, is what will take place.